Let me start. Okay, I guess that everybody knows why now we are talking about pilot climate. At the end of this talk, you will see why, but pilot climate has become one of the most important items to try to discover or to understand where we are going on. If you open any kind of newspaper, you find that we are cooling, we are warming, we are changing our earth, and uh, probably in the next 20,000 years, we will disappear somewhere. Now, as geologists, we are trying to understand if this is true or not true, and how fast we are going toward these changes, and of course, how humanity, so, el, el pueblo, el pueblo, el pueblo puede accelerar o decelerar esta cosa. Okay, I have written here some item. Climate is changing, of course it's changing. Which are the evidences of this change? And is this a normal process or is something that is strange, that is occurring now but it never occurred before? Which, this point is important, which have been recent past climate changes? Because of course, think in, I guess that more or less all of you have done a course of geology. When you speak about the story of the Earth, you speak about millions of years, or billions. The age of the Earth is 4.5 billions, and we normal, our normal life is 80 years. So we cannot compare our life in a biological sense with the story of the Earth. The scale doesn't fit. Okay? So it's important to understand what has occurred in the past to try to understand the possibility of the future. Of course, which is the impact of this climate change? I am studying beaches. And of course, if one beach goes under erosion, we lose economical power. Because if you think that most of the people come to Italy for the sea, if we lose beaches, we lose economic income. So for these beaches are important. Nobody cares about the desert. Because very few people go to the desert. So our aim is to try to understand how much money we have to invest to prevent our beaches, to maintain them economically uh, active. Of course, at the end, I would like to say something, because otherwise there is no reason to be here. Okay. Il percorso in Italian, pathway in English, is actually. First of all, we have to understand, we have to understand how the climate is changing normally. Second, which has been the causes of climate change in the past. And of course, because I am a geologist, I would like to show you a few evidences in the rocks about this changing. And of course, at the end, there will be something in it. Okay, first of all, I would like to students, of course, mm -hmm. to underline that the earth is rounding around the sun. Correct? No trouble? <laughs> and we know that this circuit is not a ring, but is an elliptic. And this stuff is not uh, a fixed elliptic uh, circuit, but it changes through time. Second point is that the Earth rotates around its axis, but this axis is a little bit tilted. And if you, if you have heard about the earthquake in, uh, in Japan, you have heard that the axis tilted a little bit more than normal. We will talk about this. The other point is that you know that in the summer, the, our, our hemisphere is tilted in this side and we get much more radiation from the sun in a direct way. Okay? These are the important points. Let me go far. The other point about climate is that climate is changing. Thinking about latitude, of course, so if you think to Canada, 
The climate in Canada is totally different from the climate in Almeria, and the climate in Sardinia is, is pretty similar. And of course, in the other side, we have the same changes. And this latitude and longitude, if you want, but latitude, are not fixed through time. They change, and we will see how. And of course, if you go up, I do not remember the highest uh, mountain in Spain, but it's in the Canary Island, and it, has, it is covered by snow, more or less, any time of the year, because they hide, okay? Now, few people instead know about the conveyor belt. Probably most of the people here know, you know about the Gulf Stream, and you know that thanks to the Gulf Stream, population in islands like uh, United Kingdom or uh, other islands close by can survive, although they are in a very high latitude position. Okay. Now this conveyor belt is has a double uh, double temperature. You can see a red and a blue current. And these two currents, one is warmer and one is colder, round around, round around the, the oceans, and they take 500 years to reach one point during their the path. And 500 years are something like seven generations of people. So it takes five or six or seven, if you want, generation of people to this point from here to come up to here. What does it mean? Does it mean that if I make a small change around here, the effect of this change will be received here 500 years later? Example. You have heard that in this part of the ocean, around here, there is a big island of garbage. Come on. La basura. La, la basura. Okay? And actually we are studying which is the behavior of this basura in the middle of the ocean to control or to change, if you want, this current. Because of course, not me and you, but probably the son of our son will get an influence of a small change. And of course, think that if we cool this red line, ice can come down and can generate different behavior in the climate over there. Clear? Okay? Now we start a little bit to think which are the climate changes that we know. First of all, I am a geologist, and of course, I deal with plate tectonics. Do you know plate tectonics? You know that uh, every something like 500 million or 300 million of years, all the continents link together to form a supercontinent that the last one was called Pangea, or Pangea if you want the English pronunciation. And of course, during this time, forget about the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt did not exist, of course. So the climate here was dramatically different from the climate we have now here. And if you go on the field, uh, I don't know here in Spain, but there are several, I have seen on the road coming from, from Barcelona several spots, you can find the Permian rocks. And all the Permian rocks around the earth are red because the climate during that time was arid. Okay? Now, just to give you an example, here you can see the evolution of arid in this color zone through time due to plate tectonics. But of course, this changing takes millions of years, so they are out of our mind. Let me go a little bit close to our mind. So, here you can see that there are cycles, thousands of years, just a little bit close to our, to our mind. And which is the trigger for this cycle? Is the position of the Earth around the Sun. You can see that this circuit change his path every 100,000 years. And what does this imply? This imply that the Earth could be a little bit farther or a bit closer to the Sun. 
And when it's closer, you get much more sun influence on the earth. And when it's farther, the contrary. Okay? The other point, the axis. The axis, remember that now we are 23.27, just a little bit more now, now it means today due to the earthquake. So what does it mean? That we are close to the maximum tilting of the axis. And of course, this tilting takes around 40,000 years to flip back and forth. And during this flip back and forth, of course, the sun radiation changes. Last point is, you know that the Earth turn around, and of course, because the axis is not vertical but is tilted, it makes a kind of a, a English is a word, but that's meant, is uh, analytical. And uh, this stuff gets bigger or smaller, and this change occurs in 25, 21,000 years. So we know that there is a sun radiation changes through time due to the position of the Earth around the sun. But still, mid thousands of years. Now let me go closer. Sunspot. Do you know about sunspots? Yeah, I do not know a lot about sunspots. But what I know is that into the sun we have a magnetic uh, event that causes the presence of sunspots around the sun surface. Now if you look, this one is 2009, we have no sunspots. And this one was 2000, we were, there were several suns of them. Now, what we have seen looking at the rings of the trees, you know that every year one tree makes a new ring when it grows. We have seen that in okay, Wolf, Spore, Mounder, Dalton, so around this period we have a period of solar weakness. We will see later what, what was the meaning of this stuff. And we have seen that more or less there is a cyclicity of 500 years in large scale, up to 10 years. And finally, 10 years is something that we can touch. Okay? Because still 500 years is a little bit too much. Now, if we talk about temperature of the Earth, you have always to take in your mind that the Earth is cooling, the venta fria. Okay? If you look in the Paleozoic, the temperature to now, we have a degree, a degrees, sorry, of several degrees of the temperature. Okay? And of course, for several reasons. And we went in a recent, if you go to we, in a recent time, we wanted to explore how detailed could be this curve coming closer to our time. So what we did, we went to Antarctica, and you will see later, and we dig a well in the ice, and we reached the boundary between, actually we arrived in the middle of the Miocene, not too bad, so only 20 million of years ago, and we started to reconstruct a curve. And after we detailed and detailed this curve, and recently, we, we, not me of course, not only me, uh, okay, we did several well, wells in uh, Antarctica and in Greenland. And you know of course why? Because Antarctica and Greenland are the two most arid countries in the Earth. What does it mean? That any time you have a rain, of course, this became ice or snow, and this can be preserved in a well through time. So if you drill 3,000 meters, you drill millions of years, okay? And through this stuff, we took a nice ice cube, actually ice tube, and we went in a lab and we did this complicated stuff that I have summarized here. So we have seen that in the last 700,000 years, we had eight glacial stages, and of course, other eight interglacial stages. We, we understood that interglacial stages were as much warm as today. Okay? We knew that the human effect on climate 
it's mainly related to uh, CO2. CO2 in the atmosphere, due to the use of hydrocarbons, in the last, I have probably, yeah, in the last 200 years, so from the Industrial Revolution, Revolution to now, has increased from this point to that point. So, like the amount of CO2 released in the atmosphere from the Earth, from normal processes, in 200,000. So, we did in 200 years what the Earth normally does in 200,000. And this one is extremely important because we can touch this time here. Okay? But, from the study of the ice core, we did this nice stuff that is strongly debated, but what is important to show you is that we had, we recognized actually, eight glacial and eight interglacial, actually there are only four here to simplify, where we can speak about the last 3,000 years. Four interglacial and four glacial times. What we did to recognize these glacial interglacial times. We sampled the ice and we measured the concentration of oxygen and carbon and we did a kind of comparison between the past and the recent uh, amount of this stuff. And we recognized a little bit this stuff here and I would like to underline you that we are living in an inter interglacial time before there was a glacial time and before again there was another interglacial time. Normally to simplify uh, we use even and odd number and uh, even are interglacial and odds are glacial. Okay? Now just to give you another datum, if you look here, an inter a glacial period can last for around 60,000 years, and an interglacial normally is a little bit shorter, around 50 to 45,000 years, okay? And if we detail a little bit, you can see that here it's very smooth and very regular. If we detail a little bit, you can see that the climate curve is not something linear but it's going up and down several times. And just to give you an idea, this point here is the end of the last glacial time, and this point here is the beginning of this interglacial time. And from year to year, it took few thousand years, something like 6,000 years, and during this time, the sea level increased of about 103 uh, one, uh, uh, 130 meters. But if we look here, and from this point here, we enter in more or less in a modern man uh, story. So from this point here, we started to have influence on in the climate about humanity. And I would like to underline you that there were several up and down, several up and down. And of course, going, going close and close to present time, we can detail, of course, and of course we can recognize more and more up and down. Just to give you an idea, we know exactly that there was a warm Roman period, a Minoan warm period, a medieval warm period, and a little ice age. If you go to Belgium on holiday, and you go to a museum, you can find several painters painting Belgium during this century, so during the 70, or is it? Where the 18, during the 18th century, with the Belgium covered by ice. Okay? Now if you go to Belgium, it's not covered by ice. Now, of course, during those times, animals crossed the Alps, they wanted to conquest the Roman Empire, but fortunately for us, we felt the stuff like that. But I would like just to give you a little bit of background to zoom a little bit in the last thousand years to show you that there was a warmer period two degrees more or less above 
the present time, the present uh, temperature, and there was a little ice age with two degrees below the present uh, temperature. And during this time, the Vikings, for instance, the Vikings, they were actually, they are, because Danish are Vikings too, they were as super uh, sailors, and they went to Greenland. And the name of Greenland, Greenland means Terra Verde. It's not green at all now. And the Northwest Passage that now is opening again was used by the Viking to pass and to go through North America. And of course, the, the vice versa, during the Little Ice Age in the uh, 18th centuries, what there was, there was the, uh, the covering of Greenland by ice, this passage of course closed and we had small little changes like an increase in amount of ice in the Alps or in our similar chains in the world. Now, just to give you an example, we are now trying to understand the solar cycle variations and we have seen that every 10 years we have a peak, a maximum peak and of course a minimum peak. And we have seen that we are sensible to these variations. Okay? So now you have a kind of background to understand the next step of my talk. Of course, when I work, I am a sedimentologist, and sedimentologists want to reconstruct the pale environment. So, which were and which was, which were and, uh, and how developed the past environments. And I use stratigraphy, you know, stratigraphy to place one stratum over another to understand which is the older and the recent. I use, of course, geomorphology to understand the processes, especially the original process, geochronology to understand the time of this event, and, of course, geochemistry, because I uh, show you that to make climate correlation, we use uh, isotope of the oxygen and of the carbon. Now, of course, we have worked in Antarctica and in Greenland. I mainly work in Canada, and now I am working in Slovenia and in the Alps, but mainly in Slovenia. So I will present you some evidences in Slovenia. You know what is Slovenia? <coughs> I want to hear C. Okay. Okay. I would like to show you a couple of examples. One example of a situation here. So facing. Spain, and another situation here facing uh, Italy mainly. Okay? Forget about the names, but just to give you an idea, this promontory here is made of Jurassic to Cretaceous limestone, developed during the Pangaea time and stuff like that. Of course, because it's a limestone, we have several karsts and several caves. Most of them now are submerged, but few of them are half and half, partially and partially. And what is interesting is that in this half and half, it's possible to see a kind of a line here, more or less at four meters above the present level del mar. Okay? And we have dated this point to 125 kilo years. Remember this point. I will use it again. Now, there are some other gay caves in which we have found Neolithic burial, and of course, I do not think that the Neolithic guys were so stupid to bury, bury, burial their, uh, how say, their dead guys under the water using a snorkeler or something like that because they are seven meters below the sea level. And again, we have another, another cave here where we have found spectacular remains of Cervo Sardo. Cervo Sardo is a, a deer that extinguished more or less between 40 to 30 kilo years. And of course, the deer fell into the cave. And now, because it is totally concretionate, so covered by spirotems means that the cave was above the sea level to include these bones, okay? 
Now, the simple history that we can reconstruct is that these caves were in one time flooded and after they were emerged. And of course, during this time, the poor deer walking around here fell down and now it's part of Spiritus. But if we want to enter much more in detail, we have to compare something that for us is much easier to understand. Now here, where there is the umbrella, you can see the modern beach, not too bad to work here, believe me. And here, now you have to believe me, here this one is an ancient beach. But if you look carefully, you can see the prograding shape of this one. Here I have put a drone. So you can see that this one is the fossil equivalent of the modern beach. But this fossil equivalent is some meter below of the sea level. Now, these two guys here are not a basketball player, but they could be around one meter and a half, Laura, Stefanon. <laughs> so anyway, but you can see that there is a little bit more about them and here and here above. And now you have to trust me, this point here is exactly the equivalent of this point here. It's what we call battigia in Italian, and in English it's nice the name is sand run. Because if you go to the modern beach, you can see the sand moving on the beach. So it's a sand run. Okay? And you can see that from here to here, there probably could be more than three meters. Now, if we go in another place, here, can you see this stuff here? This stuff here, it's now called lithophilum. Lito from lithos, rocca, and film, planta. So it's something that now is living in intertidal zone. So between the Baja, El Alta, Marea, and Osa, the Okay? And, and let me go further a little bit. Here, you can see that below, above this number two, there is a reddish stuff, probably pile soil. And after there is a number three that is wonderfully exposed here. So, what is this number three? This number three are dunes. What bloody hell does dune there? Come on, dune? Dune now in Sardinia are present only in three places all around Sardinia. One is a national park, and another one is a wonderful beach in the north. But here, you, you can see that from the base to the top, there are something like 12 to 13 meters. So to preserve a so high dune, it means that they were severed. So what we have done here, we have done OSL ages. I have no idea, but I guess that you have no idea about OSL. O means optical, S stimulating, L luminescence. So we use quartz grain to date the rocks. Nice, eh? And how we do? If this one is a quartz grain, when this grain is under the sunlight, it loses any kind of natural um, charge derived from a gamma ray or from a, a gamma ray, what is that? Uranium, thorium, natural radioactive materials present in the earth. Because the sunlight is so strong and this became zero, the other radiation. So if I cover this quartz grain with other sediment, this grain can be recharged by the natural radioactivity present in the earth. And if I know the amount per day of this recharging, I, and I can measure the total charge, I can, give, I can get the time of burial of this deposit. Okay? This is what I am doing in my lab, together with another university in Milano and with Denmark. So, the other story, but the important stuff is that I got one, two, three, four, actually ages. And I were able to see that, for instance, the dew formed during 47 and 77 kilo years or so, thousand years ago. Important, you will see later. Moreover, we have found tropical warm fine fauna in the beaches. And looking in detail, we have found 
Can you see here the final form related to dunes, similar to the big one I have shown you before, and here. Have you never heard in your life tidal notch? In Italian we call it solco di battente. No idea about the Spanish word. But here, here, look here, this one is the modern one. So it forms when the waves cut and arrive at a carbonate cliff and they uh, excavate a little bit the carbonate bottom and they form this kind of scour here. And here we have this scour that is two meters below, above, sorry, the present sea level. And here we have another small one four meters above the modern sea level. Okay? And of course, the dunes here are covering everything. Now, a little bit of summary just to be sure that you remember. We have fossiliferous gravelly beach surface formed around one to five kilo years. We have siliciclastic beach about 100 kilo years. We have dune between 77 and 47, and we have tidal notches covered by dunes around, dated around 125 and 100 kilometers. Now, if we move in the other part of the island, remember that we were here in the west coast, we moved to the east coast. I'll show you another story. But now we know exactly what I'm showing you. Look here, the tidal notch, very well preserved in one side to the other. Here there is a small one, and here is four to eight meters above the sea level. We went, of course, in a cave with Laura, and uh, we sampled the sediment into the cave. Just to give you an idea, <coughs> there were sediment blown by the wind into the cave. So, of course, these were blown when in front of the cave there were the possibility, there was the possibility to get sand. Now, this cave are, you know, here, are more or less in front of the sea. <coughs> okay? And we get ages. We get ages between 80 and 100 kilo years. So we went to see the features of the outside. And we found this coarse alluvial fan. We dated it 45 kilo years. We went up to the valley and we found a U-shaped valley. Can you see the U-shape here? Nice and preserved. And we went up and up and we found these deposits here. And these deposits now are found on the foot of the, not the glaciers, but of the snow deposits in the Alps. So our eyes became very open. And we said, what is going on? So, summary. Tidal notches, 125 kilo years, 4 to 6 meter higher, in some places also a little bit more. Aeolian sediment in the cave dated at about 100, to 80 kilo years, alluvial fan dated at 40, U-shaped fan, and these deposits, we have called periglacial deposits, dated at 80. Wow. So now we have a lot of material to do data interpretation and to try to make a nice story about the Sardinia evolution. So I have placed these stuff here just to remember you that we speak about Five, because five is the last interglacial, and the last interglacial is the closer to the present glacial, uh, interglacial time. So what we have found that during the last interglacial, the sea level was four meter higher than today. This one is not new, okay? We found that since 80 kilo years, so the end of the interglacial, the sea level started to fall. We found that from 17 to 11, the sea level rise very fast. And we can say that now we are in a high stand that normally, if we, there is no influence, can last for other 15,000 years. Now, what about the temperature? Because, you know, when you discover data, you want to add information. We, we found that during the interglacial, the climate was subtropical. During, at the end of this interglacial, 
we found that the climate was warm and humid, of course, respect them today. And going down here, it became cold, humid, cold and dry, and cold and very dry, to very similar to Greenland today, just in the end. And what we have done, we have tried to make a paleogeographic reconstruction of the area. And just to give you an idea, if you come today, you see this, but it was in this way. So totally different from today. And of course, the wind could take <coughs> this deposit and carry them into the cave. Now, what I have told you, it's new but not totally new. So what is really new from our side? Okay, if you see the curve that I have explained to you, and I, let me come back just a little bit to here, this curve here, we have tried to make something new, and we have discovered that this point is correct, but these two other points that in previous papers they were considered some meters below the present sea level are higher. Are one meter and some meter below and we do not know but the curve was apparently a little bit different and of course what is new is the age of some deposits that we have studied. Now what we have seen important is that these cycles are 10,000 years long so they do not fit with any of the Milankovic cycle that are 100,000, 40,000 or 25,000. So we started to think about sub-processional cycles and we are trying to arrive at solar irradiation variations. That will be now our next spot, I hope. And we are trying to understand how much is the continent of dust aerosol in the atmosphere. Now there is a project, and I'm reviewing this project, to try to analyze the dust found in Antarctica. To try to understand if there were, uh, uh, with a kind of cyclicity, period of dust and not dust. And this could influence the climate. So, just before to go to the conclusion, think in your mind that if a small amount of dust, not produced by humans, but produced by wind, can influence the climate, think when we burn our gasoline to move a car, how much dust we put in the atmosphere. Example, but I can bypass. Just uh, other example, but this one is important because uh, remember that only in few years the Italy changed, probably due to the presence of this dust, from this shape to a bottle. In few years means only 6,000 years. And 6,000 years, if you think, are recorded in the Holy Bible. We speak about the mega flood occurred and Noah took the old animals. This mega flood occurred during this time and changed Italy from this shape. The Po Delta was around here, now the Po Delta is here, to this shape. Now, let me go to the conclusion. Okay, further studies. Of course, we have to detail the last interglacial time to try to understand which similarities there are from this past and the present one. We have to study much more the dust in the atmosphere. We have to understand the solar radiation, of course. And the last point is also this point here. We have also to understand a little bit better the evolution of the Atlantic uh, what I can say, the Atlantic currents, because the Atlantic Ocean is playing one of the most important roles in our life. Of course, to do this we need money, and we are always fighting to get money, and of course when you go to an oil industry and you say, I am asking you money to 
and measure the growth of a stalactite, they say, what are you doing? And we mean it's always the same stuff. Now, let me conclude and okay, bypass this. So, which could be our feature based on uh, the study that we are doing? Of course, there are two ideas, the blue line and the red line. The blue line, you know, you will cool, and the red line, we will warm. So, I have no idea if we will finish in a hellish earth, or we will become ice, but of course, you know, if you check on science or other papers, you see that it's only one kind of uh, economical power to speak about climate, and uh, of course, because everybody are talking about it, I did it with you, and I hope you enjoyed it with this nice picture. Thank you.